Lesson 2-2, linear equations. So what is a linear equation? Well, it's simple. Any equation that forms a line when graphed. So some examples, well, you know, anything where you have y to the first power and x to the first power. And they're not on a bottom of a fraction. They're both at the same spot. And you might have to manipulate a little bit to get here. 2y equals 4x minus 3. 3x plus 4y equals 1. Those are all linear. Some examples of nonlinear would be y equals 1 over x, also known as xy equals 1 y equals square root of x, y equals x squared. These are all nonlinear. And when you graph them, they won't form a straight line. Hence the reason we use the word linear. So I'm into complexity because the world's a complex place. And this seems a little bit too simple. Are there really that many linear equations in the world? And the answer is surprisingly yes. Many things aren't perfectly linear, but can really be described very well with a linear equation. Um, population of the United States is incredibly linear if you map it over out of the last 60, 70 years. And that's actually another answer. You could have you know, partial linearity, for example, from a certain time period or from in a certain situation is just linear for that time only. Um, but the population of the United States, um, lots of applications. In business and science are very linear. You can use a linear equation to um, uh, curve a test if you want and just do a straight linear bump it up by a certain amount, and we'll multiply it by a certain amount, and then bump it up by a certain amount. So here's a, a pretty good example. If you're swimming, scuba diving, or in this case, if you're in a submarine, the pressure you feel in pounds per square foot, which is not a typical unit, it's usually pounds per square inch, uh, it's directly related to the depth in feet. So every time you go down, it gets 62.5 times more. Um, and it starts out at 2,117 pounds per square foot. So the equation is, um, and I'll write it twice, y equals 62.5x plus 2117. Well, the reason I'm going to write it twice is the pressure as a function of depth is equal to 62.5 times the depth, 2117. So what's the pressure at 250 feet? Pressure at 250 feet, 62.5 times 250 plus 2117. And that's uh, 17,742 pounds, that's pounds per square foot, which is a fantastic amount of pressure. Water really stacks up over you and generates a lot of pressure. So how do we write linear equations? And there's a lot of ways to do it. Your classic is what we call slope intercept. And I often say it's really the only one you need to know, and that's not true. But it's the one that's used most in the world. Y equals mx plus b. There's also point slope. Uh, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And then there's standard. ax plus by equals c. a is positive. a, b, c are whole numbers.
and they're at their least common denominator. You'll see what I mean by that later. So how does standard form work? We'll put this in standard form. y equals negative 2x plus 3. Add the 2x over. 2x plus y equals 3. A equals 2. B equals 1. C equals 3. So then the question is, could we just make it 4x plus 2y equals 6? And the answer is no, because it's not reduced. You'd have to take out a 2 from every piece. Another good one is that a good thing to keep in mind is that the A is positive. So we could have that be negative, but it wouldn't work for standard form. So how do we graph something in standard form? 2x plus y equals 3. And you probably know how to do it, y equals mx plus b. We're doing it differently. Let's make x equals 0. If x equals 0, y equals 3. So that means we could graph the point 0, 3. We could also do y equals 0. In which case, x equals, if this is 0, 3 halves. So we'd have the point 3 halves, comma, 0. And now it's fairly easy to graph. Zero three is here. Three has zero is here. There's our line. Since it's linear, we know it's a straight line. So that's it. That's giving you a lot to work with for standard form. Good luck.